Hello and welcome again. Uh, I'd like to show you how to make plugins for your chatbot now. Uh, one of the issues that we have is the problem is is that you've written code, we've compiled the project. Oops, you want to add some more functionality to it. You have a friend, they've downloaded your software, they want to add some to, um, usability to it. So basically, we need a plugin. So, to, into how we're going to make this plugin interact with the program. So, this is this is the question. So, what Microsoft have done? They've created something called an interface. Uh, with an interface, we can write a, write a, a model for what we want the plugin to look like. For this interface, I've created a new project and added it to my project called Plugin Interface. This will actually be the contractor for this for this plugin he's going to deal with the exchange of information between your plugin and my application so what have we got here we've got this interface allows for the main script to execute plugins Impl um, plugins must implement this interface so basically what i'm saying here is that if you create your own class or abstract class it must implement this interface i plugin uh, what is I plugin all about on this type of thing? So basically, we're going to have to take a little look at I plugin. What I've actually done for I plugin is I've mirrored our response function. So we're going to look at the get response as we know. And the response function has got a shape of public function get response user input as string as string. And that's the way that we consume get response. So we'd like to consume the plugin in a similar way to the way that we consume get response. So what we've done is we said, okay, I'm going to have the same shape. But in doing that, I lost the ability to have some form of logic based argument over the plugin. So I've turned it into public function um, by values input as boolean. And instead of that, we, what we do is we set the property response to be the response that's outputted from get response. So if get response is true, then response must be populated. So that makes a bit more sense. Now what we also want is a name for our plugin so that the main script, if it doesn't have a name, we will not load it. So we want the person, whoever's building their plugin to make sure that the plugin's got a name, not just a class name interface. Um, we want it to have a name. Oh, that's very nice. So what we do is anybody who wants to consume and, and build a plugin must implement um, our plugin. So we go to a sample plugin for instance and what we've done with this plugin the first line is we create a class and again this plugin is in a separate folder, a separate project as a class file from the class and class library and as we build this we say implements i plugin so i'm going to reverse work on this quickly control x uh, we say and we say implements i plugin enter microsoft drops all the parts that the plugin needs to contain it needs to contain a get response a property of a name a property of a response very nice so what we'll do is we'll delete that because i've just already made one and we'll go so just minus these down so we can walk through them one by one. Um, basically, this handles um, it implements this. What we've done is we've made a response to string so that the get response function can update the string, and we made our property response as the standard return with m response, which is our response with that's a move, and set. Response. We don't really want to set it, but maybe it's your style. You know, everybody has a different style of programming, so we we'll try to accommodate for that style. Also, we've added a, a name. We've called this sample plugin. Pretty nice. Uh, put, put a bit of comment on. So what we've done in this one, I've just done a basic response. So if the user input comes in, if the uppercase version of the user input is equal to the uppercase version of Hello World, then set the M response to be high yourself, person. 
And then that means we found the response, and then could we get response equals true? Good. So at the beginning, we've initiated it as a false. So now we've done. After what I've done here is to notice the difference. User input equals hello mom. There will be a problem here because if the person types little hello mom, then lowercase lower mom, then it might not recognise. It has to have the initial capital capital letter and hello mom. So we'll see that that doesn't actually truly work. So we need to do this uppercase or lowercase. You can easily say L case, L case. But this is just a display purpose. So we see, here we go, our sample plugin. Um, we've got a name of the plugin. Cool. So, and what we've done when we've created the plugin is we added a project reference. And we've referenced the DLL for plugin interface into the thing. So that when we go implement our plugin, imports plugin interface and we implement our plugin that we have the connection to the, the control or the plugin control. Ooh. So we've made the plugin, we've made the interface. Well, obviously, our chatbot itself needs to add the plugin. So we go add reference. And what we do, all we need to do is add the interface. The interface is basically the model of the plugin. So as long as we can execute the interface, um, then we, we've now added it to our code. So we're going to go in to our main AI, view code, and all. What I've done in the main AI, instead of putting everything on the main AI form, I actually like to separate things. So I've made this to be the main AI host form. And on the main AI host form, I've basically set up this little wrapper which runs the plugin for me. So what happens is, is when you want to use this thing, you say, okay, execute plugins. So execute. So when we send in the user input, it's going to do this one execute plugin after this is going to say create a dictionary of new type of plugins actually of i plugin so the plugins variable that we're going to use or array list or a list of objects we'll have the list of objects named i plugin that's fine that's going to use the store we'll say dim plugins as collection of new i plugins and it's going to use what i've created is called a plugin loader separate that in. and in the load plugins it's going to say it's going to return us a list of plugins object types of object plugins we're going to supply it with a path which is going to be backslash plugins and it's going to say if the directory exists probably it does we're just doing all this catching and trying get the dll file names in the directory this gets all of the dll file names in the directory then says dim assemblies as collections of assembly then a new list this time we don't know what type of assembly it might be which type of library just get all of them perfectly. so it gets all of them and then for each dll file in the collection that is found in the list um, get an assembly and if the assembly is it's going to try and load it then if the plugin type is our plugin we're going to set a plugin type so if the plugin type is collection of our new type is true or as long as long as it's, as long as it's not nothing let's switch fly through it if uh, the type is an interface or an abstract then continue if the interface type is um, it has a name then add it to our plugin types then if the plugin is um, a type of i plugin add plugin wow it's a bit deep but this is i suppose it can be pretty standard if we just want to use some other type of name, we're using a different type of plugin. We've got a few little places where we can change it to the new plugin loader. And look, we've loaded the plugin interface so we know what it is we look to mirror in our load assembly. So that's quite useful. This is the very, this does the meat of the loading of the plugins. It's going to load everything within that set folder. Very, very important. Um, so we'll go back to our plugin host quickly. So what it does is it executes that, gets the list of plugins from startup path and plugins, which can change obviously. And if the plugins are not nothing, then if it is nothing, come out of this and forget all about what we're doing. But if it is something, for each item that's in plugins, it must be an i plugin. Let's do a get response and let's get the response into response. So what I do here is set the response as I just 
add the responses on top of each other, one after the other, after the other, after the other. So we do a chained response. And then basically we return that back to the calling script, which is our original get response. So we come to our get response. And what I've done is my 002, our second algorithm, is going to basically execute the new plugins, dim exe as new plugin host, create an instance of the host, execute our user input which has come in, dim up by ourselves a little user response for them. If the exe response has got a response anyway and the response is not found by this, then we should output a thing to here, 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 here. Cool. So this is basically our plugin mechanism going on and we can write our plugins in we can create new plugins and had a load of DLLs that all have individual functions or ideas or concepts or little artificial intelligent brains doing little things so that it will just do all of the things that are loaded up in the brain. Obviously they're triggered by a user input which is what the user's made is request or claim or statement or deduction or whatever they said to the to the artificial intelligence it needs to be scripted for or some kind of idea. So we've got our little thing. We're gonna take a little look at what's happening. Oh. So we've done a build, we've got an issue. Yeah, there is no issue as such on screen, but you know This is this is GFDFGD. Right, so we're getting our reverse input back what? The problem is is that we haven't We've got, we're going to build the whole solution. All files will be created. We shall go to our sample plugin, open folder. We should go into the bin folder, collect the plugin, sample plugin DLM, copy. And we should place it into our AI project bin, into the plugins. We'll paste that here. Paste. I will try again here. Hi yourself person. Right, so we so. know that we're getting that exactly coming back from our plugin. Also I've got another little error which I've just noticed if we're going to repair. We need to close it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a form event quickly. I'm going to say form AI events. We're going to do a load. Um, we're going to do a double click. Okay. And we've done it here. Double click end. Okay, that's fine. Just make sure that you've got that extra little double click end and we'll see what come out of work. So we'll save that. This is completed for now. We're going to close that. So we've completed this technology. We're going to run our little project from the, from the actual debug bin. Hello, mom. It doesn't work. We do the capital H. Hey, I'm not your mom. Right. So we see the importance of doing a high case and zero case. zero cents. Okay, okay. Double click. It's finished. So I'll here end of the lesson. Um, what we'll be doing next eight week is trying to deal with some form of long term memory for our chatbot. So we has a memory of what we've said to him and a bit more functionality thank you for watching and the code shall be available on spidersweb.co.uk and you should be able to see design in a chatbot lesson four thank you very much for watching